So in August 2002, I read this article that Franny had written in The Guardian saying that there were a couple of tickets left to the premiere of her film Drowned Out. I went along to the screening and it really was, you know, one of my life's biggest turning points. I just decided then and there that this was exactly the sort of thing I should be doing with my life and I started volunteering with Franny. I'd only known her like a couple of months and she was like, right, we're going to Amsterdam to a documentary festival, book the travel. And so of course I just went to book a flight and I was just about to press pay with the credit card and she was like, what are you doing? I mean, I didn't even know why a train would be better than a flight. I had no idea really what she was referring to. It was just she said, book a train, so I did. I didn't want to question her, so I was just, okay, yep, yep, whatever, oh yeah, yep, climate change, oh yep, yep. Six years later, it was, we were putting the finishing touches on the opening sequence of our new film. So uh, here we are, down in the dungeon at the Royal College of Art, and uh, we are creating the beginning of the universe. Uh, it's all taking place in there. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Beginning of the universe. Take 15. Coming up. Yeah, that's very beautiful. Hi, oh, that was so great. So uh, is, that, is that a scrap take, would you say? Yeah, or? Scrap. It all started way back in 2002 uh, with an idea to pinch the structure of Steven Soderbergh's film Traffic, uh, which is um, six interweaving human stories, uh, which is just a fantastic way to, uh, to look at an international issue, a very complicated international issue, in his case, the drugs trade, uh, but in our case, oil and climate change, and we were going to call it crude. Here, Lizzie, give us yours. You can give us the, uh, you can give us the update. In 2004, Franny sat me down in a cafe in Soho, I'll never forget, and said that she was offering me the job of being producer on her new climate change and oil documentary. She basically said, I think you can do it, but you have to give up everything else in your life. Like, you have to quit hockey, you have to quit your volunteering, no more of this clubbing, socialising kind of thing. Because of the absolute you know, crisis situation that we are in, in regard to the climate, uh, I really wanted to make a film, well there was no point making a film unless it went completely totally mainstream as in every multiplex in the land or every multiplex cinema in the world. And so to do that it was clear that I really need a producer uh, who is on a much bigger league than me. I just instinctively thought, yeah, let's do this, because I, I, I liked her, I liked her films, and I liked this idea of two different styles that could come together and, um, you know, and that the end product might be you know, a, a, a film grounded in, in the sort of truth that Franny deals with in her other films, that I might be able to, to you know, help her bring it to a much bigger audience. I'd had the experience with McLeibel that I, I tried to get a commission, but I couldn't because of people had been sued by McDonald's in the past, the TV companies, and so I'd been forced to make it independently. Um, and realised the advantages of owning all the rights, controlling the distribution, having complete editorial freedom. And so we, we came up with a system which we call crowdfunding. And it's, it's basically get a load of people all to invest a small amount of money and they all own a percentage of the profits. It's the 12th of December, 2004. We're starting Crude, our new documentary, today. Initially, we thought we needed about £50,000 to get going, so we decided to sell 100 shares at £500 each. Climate change is the most important story of all time because we're all going to die. <laughs> 
the great masterpiece. Is it? It's the funding document that is going to get those people out there to give us 50 grand to give you, the viewers, the future viewers, <laughs> a lovely documentary. We don't know what the stories are yet, uh, obviously, because we haven't done the research. That's what. That's the next stage. Um, but, for example... It's amazing we got any money at all, considering Frenny's unconventional soldier, pitch. It, um, what is crude going to be? So, then, oil. The problem with oil... At the end of that first night, we'd raised £37,000, which is more than Frenny had used to make her entire film about the Indian Dam drowned out. We were attempting to get a, you know, a fairly serious, fairly dry subject, climate change, into the multiplexes. And the key part of that is great human stories, uh, great, compelling, lovable humans. Um, so that was, that, was the, that was the first big mission, really, is, is to find those people. Radio mics, check. Good. Gun mic and mount and fluffy cable. Where's the gun mic? We're getting ready to go to India to find this man here, Mr. Jay Wadia. We'll start another right back. There he is. Possible mm -hmm. star of good, maybe. He was saying the reason he wanted to start an airline is because he wants to end poverty in India, and the way to do that is to get more people travelling. Let's go on lying around in a hotel room. Does it sound like much hard work? <laughs> we are waiting for a phone call from Jay or Jay's secretary, which we were promised in 15 minutes at 11 a.m. What time is it now? Uh, 6.28. 6.28. So that's a what long day 15 is it? minutes, even in Indian time. <laughs> <laughs> we figure we've been phoning for two days now. We haven't had any uh, luck. So we're just going to go down there and see if we can just wait around to see him, really. We keep going in and then he can't meet us or he's going to meet us in an hour or then that's cancelled, but come back tomorrow and then come back this afternoon. Basically staking him out now. How long do you need? 40 minutes? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. You know, in the year 2005, I mean, you know, having an elite class who can fly in a country of a billion people is ridiculous. So we've just been filming all day long at the airport, all the Go airplanes flying around and Jay shouting at people and things. You're saying the PSF is not payable. What's wrong with you? I mean, I'm scared just filming it. You're suspended. You're suspended. Both of you come to my office right now. God knows what they're feeling. Maintaining my brand means something to me, okay? We wanted to find a character who was representing the, the other way of living, as it were, you know, the non-destructive, non-consumer nightmare <laughs> that all the rest of us are living. And we quite quickly managed to find Piers and Lisa and in Cornwall. Hello, my name's Arthur. Over there is Franny the filmmaker. <coughs> Let's go and see her. They were showing us their, their animals and uh, how they grow their grow most of their food. This is a polytunnel. Coriander. Oh no, that's flat leaf. No, this, no, 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 this is celery. <laughs> Let me see. Who is it who does the uh, <laughs> the <laughs> Piers also showed us how they uh, convert the cooking oil so it can be used in their car. If I could stick that in that car now, it really? would run. Yeah? And in fact, I might show you just to prove it. <laughs> Smells really nice. <laughs> Smells like you're just about to have some right, egg and bacon or chips. <laughs> it hasn't properly, it's not running through yet. It's supposed to smell of chip rats. Looking for things to do them. Next day, me and Lizzie got the train back, and I was going on and on about, I'm going to move to Cornwall, I'm going to live in a community like they do, I'm going to grow all my own food and all that. And Lizzie pointed out, if Piers and Lisa could inspire you that much just from one evening, then they're going to do exactly that to everybody who watches the film. And that was exactly the point. We were trying to say that an alternative way of living is more inspiring, you can be happier, you can have nicer children. 